everybody what is going on and welcome back to another video so today's the day the tahoe is getting a little bit of a makeover i have the new tail lights going in we got the new headlights i have led bulbs as well as some touches i'm going to be doing to the badges but before we get to that i just want to take a second to thank cove for sponsoring today's video so what i have right here is the cove commuter bluetooth speaker i've been using it for about two or three weeks now while i'm in the driveway working on the car i'm um, working on the truck in the garage as i'm getting ready you guys are going to see that in an upcoming video but this thing has been great now it has great volume as well as a subwoofer under here and one of the things I love about it is it has an actual volume knob. Now with speakers I've used in the past, they just kind of have those clicky buttons and they don't have an actual knob. With this, you can quickly set the volume up to max. It lets out a beep so you know where you're at. And then from there, you can just control the main volume from your phone, which is what I usually do. You also have these nice buttons up here to swipe to change tracks. And it has two modes, normal or base mode, which takes advantage of that nice subwoofer underneath. <laughs> Another great thing about it is the size. It has a nice weight to it and it's shaped pretty much like a soda can. So you could come in here and just drop it in your cup holder. If the radio in your car isn't working, you can leave it in there. Or if you're a third gen owner like me and you have no cup holders, it also has these little pads underneath. So you can set it on its side like that or set it on the seat or something. You don't have to necessarily stand it upright and put it in a cup holder. So if you guys want to go and check out the Cove Commuter, link is going to be down in the description. Also, if you use the code LSX65, you're going to get 65% off of this thing. So definitely go check that out link is going to be right below the video all right so i think i'm going to start with the tail lights pretty straightforward installation they're just held in place with four phillips head screws one of these are actually broken off of the housing so the tail light uh wiggles just a little bit but uh, i got my little uh, phillips head screwdriver here i'm just going to zip these out remove the old tail lights you can see i still have the uh trans am center console back here as well as uh Quite a bit of styrofoam and dirt and piping and crap. I still didn't get around to cleaning the interior, so don't judge me for that. But I have the new tail lights here. Anybody who's interested in uh, knowing more about these, I'm going to put a link to the video where I unbox these down in the description, or better yet, right on top of the screen there, as well as a link to the uh, eBay listing if you want to go pick these up yourself. That one's already loose. Now, after watching. Um, some YouTube videos and people who got the same lights and just reading some comments some people were saying that the factory screws didn't fit not in these lights in particular but just um, all eBay lights in general for these trucks at least so hopefully we're not gonna have that problem here's our nice LED replacement but you can see it just has these retrofit connectors where these plug into the uh, the bulb sockets. So I pull the bulbs out and then these connect to the factory wires. And then for the reverse light, it just uses the regular bulb. There's no LED for the reverse. And apparently you can put these in wrong because there's a bunch of stickers on here. It says warning black to black wire. So I'm assuming the black wire on this side of the connector needs to match up with the black wire on the uh, truck harness. That's in like that. Black wire right here is matched with the black wire on the taillight side. We're gonna do the same for the, what light is this? I'm trying to figure out which way the taillights were installed. The yellow's at the top. Black wire right here, just like that. And then it looks like this kind of stuff's in here. Oh, that's nice. So the, uh, the whole connection actually goes inside the housing. So you don't have to worry about moisture getting in there pop uh, a reverse light in there if it'll reach barely but it did reach all right before i go any farther i have to remove this um broken piece the replacement tail light doesn't have these clips on the mounting points so i'm gonna just Steal these. Got a little ahead of myself there and just went and bolted the whole thing in, but I'm feeling confident it's gonna work. That is the headlights. Or tail lights. Alright, now you guys are gonna tell me if you have brakes because I have no idea. Brake lights working? A oh, turn signal. Okay, I can see the turn signal working. 
there's the factory one. Come over this side. I mean, that looks great with the paint color and the slight smoke that's on it. Very happy with that. Look at that. What do you guys think? Before we actually get to the headlights, I think I'm gonna go ahead and ditch the unibrow. Now, it's not that I don't like the way it looks, it's that I don't like the way it looks. And by that I mean it's all like faded and dull looking. Normally when I, uh, I would shine it up, hit it with some, um, you know, wax and the buffer, shine it up and it looks good, but I'm really getting tired of having to do that every time I wash the thing. And overall, the thing is just kind of flimsy and rattly. So I think I'm gonna pull it off and uh, we'll see how it looks with the new headlights. I can always throw it back on or get a new one if I uh, decide I wanna put it back. So with or without, what do you guys think? I don't mind it. I think it looks cleaner. Once the new headlights are in there, I think it'll look good. Honestly, the only thing that's really bothering me is the, um, you can clearly see there's like a gap right here now. Like with the unibrow, you can see that. But yeah, I like it. I think I'm gonna leave it like this for a while. All right guys, so it's the next day. I got the taillights all done, drove to work with the thing and uh, they've been working great. Now we're gonna be tackling the headlights. I have my headlights right here ready to go. I'm also gonna be using this Meguiar's headlight coating just because these lights are cheap and I'm not sure um, how long it's gonna take before they turn yellow. And then I have some clear silicone, which I'm gonna, and then just got some clear silicone, which I'm gonna be using to reseal the outside of the lens before we install it. All right, so I think I'm gonna start by just pulling the lights out. Any of you guys who, um, don't have one of these trucks and or have one and you don't know how to remove the headlights it's really really simple all it has is these two pins you just uh, turn them away from the clip there yank them on out and then that's it your lights out i'm gonna leave the bulbs in the housings because we will not be transferring those over there's something in there And then for the turn signal light, that is actually easier than the top. If we look down in here with the headlight removed, there's this little clip here. You just push on that and that's it. All right, so I'm sitting here siliconing away. I got one headlight done. All I did was come in here with the silicone and I ran a bead all along the seam around the light. I put a good like uh, glob underneath this clip to make sure that's sealed up. Same thing with the bottom. You can see this section right here, that's actually the factory silicone that's coming out. That's the only spot that I actually could see like silicone coming out. So I went around this entire thing, just filling that gap in, then I ran my finger across it to make it smooth. So this one light is done. I have to do the same thing to this light and the um, turn signals. Things with the turn signals, if you look here, this thing will focus, there's this big gap going all the way around and the light is actually overhanging the housing so I don't know how I'm gonna be able to seal that up I think I'm gonna take the Phillips screws out of there see if they have a gasket um, in here because I'm, I'm looking at this and I don't see a gasket like in this seam unless it's just black but this is simple enough to just unscrew it and I can see if there's a gasket if there isn't I'm gonna put a bead in this groove and then put the light back on they might just uh have like silicone globbed in there you can see a little bit right there so i'm not sure 
um, how I can really seal these up. I'm gonna go do the headlight first, being I only have a certain amount of silicone, and then I think I might come in here and try to uh, just run a bead along the seam on the outside here. The fact that this might be liquid silicone, I don't wanna try pulling this apart because I might just make things worse. But the reason we're doing all this is because these lights are cheap. Most of the time, they're not sealed up correctly just because they're cheap. And what actually happens is, um, and I'm sure a lot of people experience this with eBay lights, you get moisture in there. So eventually, after maybe even a few weeks, you're gonna see that inside the lens is gonna be little droplets of water and uh, they might start fogging up. So we're doing this in an attempt to prevent that from happening because these lights cost me like $68 shipped. And it wasn't that I was being cheap, it's just that these were the only housings or the only headlights that I could find anywhere, I mean, just from me searching on Google, that I liked. And they just so happened um, to be the cheapest as well. I didn't pull the housings apart. All I did was come in here and I had enough silicone and I just siliconed um, that gap all the way around. Now, unfortunately, what I thought was gonna happen happened and you can actually see the silicone. I mean, most parts, I smoothed it out really good and it kind of evenly made a nice line inside the housing. So you can't really notice it. That part there, like you say, I gotta smooth that out a little bit where there's a little bit of a dip. Um, the biggest noticeable part is on the ends, you could see there, you kind of see the silicone through the uh, housing and right over here as well, you could see it. I'm hoping when this dries, it's gonna be less hazy and more clear, but I think the way it sits in the grill, um, that shouldn't be too noticeable. Once we get them installed, um, we'll take a look and see how it is. I mean, worst case, if this gets, uh, it's really noticeable or if it turns yellow over time, the lower housings are like 30 bucks for the pair. I could just get a set of turn signals and just swap them out and hope that, um, you know, they don't get moisture inside of them. While we'll wait for these to dry, I'm gonna go grab the new bulbs. We're gonna go put the fog light bulbs in and then by then, hopefully, um, these are dry enough where you get to install them. Here are the bulbs I'm putting in. I got these off at Amazon. I'm gonna link them down below. I have a set of the 9006s that are going for the headlights. And then we have the 880s that I'm gonna be using for the fog lights. Now, these are just LED replacement bulbs. I'm not sure how bright they're gonna be. I tried running a set of these, not this exact brand, but LED bulbs in my Subaru, and they were really dim. I ended up going to HIDs, but these are cheap enough. I figured I'll try them out. Worst case, I can always return them, and then um, we'll get an HID kit. So you can see these things are pretty straightforward. You just have an LED bulb with a heat sink, and then on this end, it's just the, uh, factory connector except it's not hardwired into the bulb you just have this like kind of pigtail wire huh i just realized i don't think this is gonna work there's no way this could fit in there all right so i didn't bother trying to get these to fit i just wanted to amazon and they have the correct style that's in there right now so i'm just going to send these back order the right ones and we'll swap them out so i guess that means it's time to install these lights now um the same thing goes for the headlights using at least this style of bulb. And I think all the LED bulbs, they're pretty much like the same style and they have that big heat sink on the back, at least for the headlights. And with the stock housings, they're not gonna fit because you can see you have this cover, um, this piece of the bracket right behind the bulb. So with that heat sink sticking out, it's gonna come in contact with this. So you're gonna have to modify this to get the bulb to fit. But with the aftermarket housings, you can see there's nothing back here. It's already been modified. So it'll fit in here without a problem. We have our LED bulb installed. You can see what I mean with the cutout around here that allows the heat sink to clear. I realized too that I have to transfer over the, um, the high beam bulb because I didn't get lights for the high beams because I just don't use them enough in New York. It's a little yellow, but the filament looks all right. A little handy pins back in. A little silicone on the grill there. Made a rag to take that off. Yeah. Well, it's only one light, but that looks pretty damn good. Once again, I like the black with the color of the paint. It just looks so nice. 
This uh, marker bulb here looks very milky and gross. I'm gonna go see if I have a replacement before I put this thing back in. All right, all I found were these um, LEDs. So now I gotta decide if I wanna put LEDs for the markers, run to AutoZone to get bulbs, or just put the milky one back in. Well, after further testing, it turns out the milky one doesn't even work. So I guess we're going with the LEDs for now. Look at that. Now you can just kind of see the silicone. You come in here, you can just kind of see that, but it's really not that noticeable because it's right kind of on the edge of that line and it is clear. So I'm just gonna leave them and we'll see when it dries. It'll probably dry a little bit clearer, but I'm very happy with the actual style of the lights. I love the, uh, the clear with the black. Let's go ahead, pop this side in and see if they work. So I'm gonna swap this one out for an LED as well, just so they match. This one's also pretty much done. But yeah, I'm most likely gonna end up just uh, trading these out for regular bulbs. I think this is a, this is the turn signal. Yeah, this is the turn signal. I think that's the daytime running light. This looks awful. All the, uh, the amber coating is gone. I'm gonna see if I have another one of these. All right, I found another 3457 bulb. It's not amber, but it will work. So when you're actually installing these, there's like this hook on this side. You just gotta get that hooked in. And then uh, you just kind of look down in here and get the clip in like so. Love it. All right, so the other light is installed. Only thing I have to do is adjust it. If you look, you can see there's kind of a gap over here opposed to this side. And you can see the whole light is just kind of sitting further in at the top come over to this one it's sitting pretty much perfect and if we take a look at the adjuster in here you can see the end of the threads are flush with the plastic and if we come over to this side the threads are sticking out a lot more so I'm just gonna back this wheel off now to get the light to sit straight then I'm gonna have to make a final adjustment at night um, aiming these at a wall to make sure they're not uh, shooting up too high all right so as you can see the headlights are on but they're not working. Also, my little LED um, side marker isn't working over there. The LED might just be bad because the one on the other side is working. But I took a quick look at the instructions and it said that the bulbs are polarity sensitive, unlike the um, halogen bulbs. So I'm gonna try disconnecting them and just flipping the connector and we're gonna see if that fixes the problem. The thing is, I believe when I installed these just a few minutes ago, the, um, the connector can only go on one way there's like a lock oh never mind i'm wrong so there's a lock on both sides i don't know if you guys can see that so i'm just gonna try flipping this headlights are on right now i can't believe though i got that wrong on both lights something's happening now we're in business that looks sick so so much better than the factory stuff so the headlights are good to go. I couldn't be happier with the way they looked. Only thing really to address with the lights now are the fog lights. I'm gonna get the bulb swapped out with Amazon. And um, if they come in time, I'm gonna throw that at the end of the video. But right now, let me show you what we're gonna be doing to the badges. All right, so before I get to the badges, we're just gonna come down here to the wheels. Now I do not have replacement center caps yet. I'm still deciding on what I wanna do. But I did go ahead and pick up some replacement lug nut covers. All over the truck, they're like different sizes. Like we come up to the front here. These are faded even more. Some of them stick out farther than others. So I went on eBay and I picked up a set of brand new ones. We're gonna swap them out right now and then we'll go on to the badges. All right, so I think that is looking a hell of a lot better. Now let's move on to the front badge. So as you can see, the bow tie here is pretty faded. It has some chips and it just doesn't look that great, especially now with the new headlights. We don't have those uh, matching kind of yellowy 
original ones in there. So I went on eBay and I picked up this guy. This is like a metal billet bow tie. You can see it's gloss black. I think that's gonna look really good with these headlights and uh, what I'm gonna be doing with the badges. All right, so to get this thing installed, I believe I'm gonna have to pull a grill. I think there are like clips behind here holding this on and you have to disengage them from the back. You might be able to come in here with a flathead and kind of pry it off, but I don't want to take that chance being there's paint all around this and I don't want to chip it. So I'm just going to come in here, remove this top piece, um, turn the four Phillips screws that are holding the grill in. Then there's one like 10 millimeter nut hiding under there. And then the whole thing just kind of pops out. It's clipped in by both sides by the headlights. All right, so with the grill off, we could just come in here and you see these two little clips, one here, one here. Let's just I'm gonna use a little glass cleaner. All right, so I think I'm gonna place the double-sided tape on the grill in those select areas, and we'll just push this thing right over it. All right, so before we move on, I just did some digging and I found these in the center console. I'm pretty sure this kit came with the bow tie from eBay and they're just studs that screw into those holes that are in the back and then allow you to use these washers and bolt them into the grill. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna leave this alone for now. I'm gonna come in and do this on my own time just because the weather is getting kind of gross and um, I wanna get this done before it starts downpouring. But moving on to the side of the truck, I have some more badges going on to replace the gold Z71s. Bam. What do you guys think of that? These came off, I think of like a Silverado. I got them on eBay, they are metal. So they're not like cheap plastic and I'm just gonna pull these guys off and put these in the exact same place. Once again, I think that's gonna wrap everything up really nicely. Being I'm kind of going with this like black and silver kind of theme. I'm gonna actually use a plastic razor blade because these are pretty flat. You can't get behind them with dental floss. I'm just gonna come in here with a piece of painter's tape masking tape and just put it right underneath the Z there just so I can put it back at the exact same height and it's not going to be like wonky and sideways. Plastic razor blade. Bring you guys in close for this. Enough. I'm going to come in here with Gugan. Hopefully this uh, glue doesn't give me too much of a fight. Heating this up would probably make it come off a little bit easier, but I do have the Gugan and this is a thin emblem. I didn't think there would be too much glue there anyway. All right, so after a little bit of scraping, I got all the glue off and then I just came in here with this little uh, buffing pad and some of this Meguiar's Ultra Cut just to remove any uh, remaining residue because it was kind of like a dirt outline like stuck to the paint. But I got all that off, so now we're ready to stick on our new badge. So if you guys want to pick these up, I'm going to put a link to the eBay auction where I bought mine. They really weren't a lot of money. I think they were like 15 bucks for two of them. That's straight. All right, I think that came out awesome. It looks so much more modern than the one that was on there. And it definitely doesn't look out of place either. It's just about the same size. And the color scheme is definitely gonna match everything else really nicely. All right, so all the badging is finished aside from the Chevy logo, that I'm gonna get to right now. But look at how much better this looks. I mean, just the black goes with the smoke on the taillights. It's a perfect size 
Um, honestly, it looks like it could have came that way. So what I ended up doing for the back one and this other side one, I used a heat gun and that was able to uh, separate the emblem from the glue. So I didn't have that like uh, kind of tinfoil backing on the paint. And then I just used the goo gun with a plastic scraper, scraped it all off. But now it's time to address the last emblem on here. And that is the Chevy thing. But now it's time to address the final badge on this thing, and that is going to be the Chevrolet logo. Now, I am going to be keeping this. We are just removing it and replacing it with something a little nicer that's going to go with everything else. Also, once again, this is something that I picked up off of eBay along with all the other badges, and I think this is a, uh, a 2015 and up badge or somewhere around there. But check that out. We have the uh, gloss black matching Chevy letters, pretty much the exact same size as what's on here. So we're just going to pull this off, stick that on there, and I think we're going to be done with the badges. Now, when it comes to putting this on, all of these letters are individual. So you need to align these and kind of make a template with masking tape. I'm not going to go through that in this video, just because it's going to take a little extra time. And this video is probably going to be pretty long already, but I'm going to leave a link to the video down in the description that I use to get all these lined up and actually put them on here. So I don't have any dental floss or anything. Normally you could come in here with some dental floss and just kind of go along and pull them all off. So I'm gonna use the heat gun and uh, plastic scraper method like I did with the rest of them. All right, that badge had a lot more glue on it. And if you use dental floss, you could probably pull it off and you could reuse it, but I wasn't planning on it. So I just heated it up, went in there with the uh, razor blade. But you can see the outline, so I'm just going to come in here now. And we're going to stick this on here. It doesn't have to be perfect. When I mount it on here, I'm going to leave a little bit of a space. I just want to have it down far enough so it doesn't interfere with the goo gun. Chevy emblem is on and look at this. This came out absolutely perfectly. I couldn't be happier with it. Once again, I'm going to put a link to the video I used actually on the top of the screen. So if you want to uh, know how to get these letters on here and have them be nice and straight, just uh, use that video. It was very helpful. Here she is. What do you guys think of this? Um, yeah, as you can see, I went a little overboard towards the end there. And if you guys follow me on Instagram or just on the um, YouTube community tab, I was teasing you guys with photos of the tire and I wouldn't really give you a shot of the wheel. But these are 2014 Silverado Z71 wheels. I think they ran these same wheels all the way up until uh, currently. I think up to 2018, the Tahoes have them as well. And you could get them kind of in like a, um, a graphite finish. That's the picture I put on Instagram for you guys. All right, so pretty much where we left off, I was doing the back badges. So I got the Chevrolet all installed. You saw I used the tape. Once again, I'm going to link that uh, video that I followed in the description to show you guys exactly how to... Uh, what am I doing here? Show you guys exactly how to get the letters all lined up over there but um it came out really good let me just flip the camera here you can see i got them aligned pretty much perfectly um pretty much the same height as the z71 over there i love the look of the black with the smoke on the taillights like all this stuff i was kind of uh 
very carefully picking these mods out because it's really easy just to, especially with aftermarket badging, well this is all like factory, but when it comes to switching badges, it's very, very easy um, to go from tasteful to tacky. So I was kind of trying to keep it pretty much like if the thing was built today, how the factory would do it. So as you saw, I went and swapped all the badges out. I got rid of the old gold Z71 badges. We have the newer style Z71 on there with the black Z. Put it in the exact same place. Then we come around to the front. All I did was swap out the bow tie for the uh, black one here. And that is a very nice little touch because as you saw before, my old one was just uh, faded and it was kind of chipped and it was gross looking. Then once again, tying again with that black kind of uh, black and silvery theme, we have the uh, black housing headlights which I can see already, um, I just washed the truck and it looks like I got a little cloudiness in there already, so that kind of sucks. Like, hopefully it's just the, uh, the gasket and the bowl because the headlights are fine. This one's all right, so it might just be um, either I missed a little spot around the corner or it's the gasket where the bulb sits. It's not really too big of a deal. I'm gonna hit that with a heat gun and try sealing it up a little bit better. But as for the silicone, you really can't notice it. Once it dried, it dried clear. So, I mean, if you come all the way in here, you could just see the bead, but it's right on the edge of this uh, channel here. So you step back here, you can't even notice it. I also got the fog lights installed. So they're 6,500K exactly the same as the headlights so everything matches i went and lined these all up went to my buddy james's garage again we shot it at the wall and um got them all aimed so they're not like uh, aiming too high going into people's eyes they're pretty much exactly where they should be we pulled the truck back like 25 feet and uh, used some tape measured the height of the light uh measured the height of the garage door and then we just aimed them from there but I carry the uh, center caps, well not the center caps, the little lug nut caps I have on the old wheels. You can see I use them here. Because from the factory, these wheels use just regular, uh, I think they're like stainless lug nuts or just regular um, metal like acorn shiny cap lug nuts. So I definitely like the, uh, the touch of the factory black uh, lug nut caps on these wheels. You can see, of course, I have the black bow tie center cap to kind of tie everything together into these uh, black C71 um, badges as well as the black bow tie in the front. Coming around back, as you already saw, we have the uh, Z71 replacing the old gold Z71 badge like it did around everywhere else. And then uh, that's pretty much it. The uh, tail lights, just like the headlights, they got that little uh, black kind of smoke to them just to kind of tie everything into the badges. But these wheels, oh my God, these wheels, I couldn't be happier with them. I was on the fence about picking them up. I didn't know if I wanted to um, just get factory replacement Z71 2004 wheels, like the exact wheels I had on here. Because you saw the clear coat was in pretty bad shape on those wheels. This particular setup that came with these tires, they're 305 60 18s. It's an 18 inch rim. I love the aggressive look of the tire. These are Nitto Terra Grapplers. I paid 750 for this set. The guy wanted, he was asking 850. I had to drive about an hour and 15 minutes out to Jersey to pick them up. So he decided, so I was able to get them down to 750 and the rims are pretty much perfect. There's no curb rash, nothing like that. Uh, they look really, really good. But the tires are in all right shape. They have maybe uh, about half of the tread left. There is some minor cracking starting to go on in here, if you can see that. So I'm probably gonna replace them maybe in the fall before winter. If, they're, if the tread's still good and if I like the way they ride, I might just leave them through the winter and change them next year. But if I did go to replace them, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go with another 305. I do like the way they look and the way they hang over the rim a little, but um, depending on how it rides, like on the streets and with bumps and everything, I might just uh, go to a 285. I'll keep you guys updated because I just put these on yesterday. I really haven't gone far with them yet. So um, once I uh, really daily this thing, drive it for a few weeks, I'm gonna post an update video. Um, talking about this setup and how I like the way it rides. But as for fitment, because I know everybody is wondering how the hell do they fit on this little thing and um, what the hell did I have to cut? So being this is a 30560, I think it's technically a 30, it's classified as like a 33 inch tire. The exact measurement is about 32 and a half. And I just bolted these things up. There's no spacers, there's no magic, there's no nothing. The only thing I did, 
after um, I got home yesterday, I threw them on, I went around driving it. The only thing I noticed was uh, on really, really hard turns, when the wheel's all the way in, it was rubbing on this plastic shield. And this is just a piece of plastic. Um, there's really nothing behind here until you get up to here, then there's like uh, the inner steel wheel well. But this used to be down here. I just came in here and cut this. So let me turn the wheel for you guys see what I'm talking about. But when it was at full lock like that, and particularly if you're like backing out and hitting the brakes and the front end kind of goes down, the tire was rubbing right on that piece of plastic. So I just came in there and trimmed that up. Same thing on this side. Took me maybe like two minutes. Came in there and cut that up a little higher. This one, there's actually nothing up here. So even if you had to, if you ran something bigger, you could just cut this up higher. But as for the inside, it is not rubbing in there. It is not rubbing on any of the suspension components. I do not have any spacers or anything like that. And just the way they are now, I love the way they sit. I don't plan on spacing them out or doing anything like that. So yeah, um, 2014 and up Z71 18 inch wheels with a 305 60, um, 18 tire you could just bolt them right on out really no mods required aside from that little trimming oh other thing for the back same thing if i come over here i notice when i hit a bump really hard the back tire bottoms out and it rubs you can see right there it's rubbing on um, once again there's plastic shield there's nothing back there so i'm going to come in here and just kind of i marked it out already i'm going to cut that same thing up front, little, little tiny spot. It just makes a noise on. I'm just gonna cut around that. And that's really all that needs to be done. You don't have to uh, run spaces or anything. Sure you can if you want to space them out a little bit and have them stick out the wheel well, make it look more aggressive. You could run a spacer. I don't want to do that though, just because as I mentioned, I'm kind of, uh, I was looking to make this look new, but factory. So I don't really want the wheels like sticking out of the uh, fenders. Plus I'm trying to make this somewhat practical and comfortable still. And um, that's why I didn't go with a lift kit. I might go ahead, actually, I probably am gonna go and level it. So I'll put a leveling kit in the front, but I have no plans of uh, jacking it up or doing anything like that. It's pretty much gonna sit this way. The sole purpose I even got this is to uh, tow the Camaro. So I don't wanna go jacking it up like six inches, but leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Do you love it? Do you hate it? You think I improved it? You think I ruined it? Personally, I love the way it came out. The size of the wheels, the finish, um, all the emblems, the color of the truck, everything just tied together really nicely and I couldn't be happier with it. As for what's next, I mean, there really isn't much. This thing is cleaned up pretty well. Um, only thing body-wise really are the bumpers. I've been saying this over and over, but I want to come in here and get these bumpers resprayed. You can see there's that little bit of rust right there on the back one. And then the front one just has a bunch of uh, rock chips, probably because this thing was driven a lot of highway miles, I'm assuming, hence the high mileage. But you know, there's shits like uh, little chips that started rusting over on the bottom half of the front bumper. But I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here. As I said, uh, probably 50 times by now, I couldn't be happier with the way this thing came out. Um, I mean, just look at it. So any questions you guys might have about anything I did to this thing, um, please leave a comment. I'm gonna link all the stuff I have, the exact headlights, the bow tie, um, the lug nut, the center caps, the lug nut covers, the Z71 badges, all the stuff that I put on this, um, even the wheels. I'm gonna put a link to the years you could get them off of. You could just go on like Facebook Marketplace or OfferUp or Craigslist. I got mine off of Craigslist and you can easily find them on there. Um, there are a lot of people who just took them off because they lifted their truck to put aftermarket wheels. So they're pretty easy to come by. Expect to pay anywhere between like 700 to 1200 new takeoffs with like the brand new tires with like five miles on them. We're going for 1200. These I paid 754. But be on the lookout for the next video because we're going to be doing a quick little tour on the garage. I'm just about done with it. So I'm going to give you guys a little walk around, show you what I did, how I set it up, and what's to be coming in there. Well, I completely forgot to shoot an outro for this video, so I'm just going to throw it in right at the end here. Remember, be on the lookout for the next video. I'm going to give you guys a little tour of that garage. I'm also going to have updates on the Camaro and the Trans Am. I know this channel started revolving around the Camaro, and it's going to continue that way. Um, the Tahoe just seemed to be a favorite for everybody, and there's going to be a lot more stuff happening on this thing, so, you know, it's not like this is going away. But it's definitely the Camaro's time to shine. It's warm out now. I want to get that thing back to the track, so uh, be on the lookout for those Camaro videos because we are going to be doing a lot of stuff to that car. But for now, that is finally going to do for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.